Hi, I'm Kinkas and I'm a synth DIY guy. I'm not a service technician, but after building synths for a while, I started getting some requests to fix old synths. I don't usually accept this kind of work, but sometimes it's worth it, like right now with this gorgeous mini Moog. And look at that, we're even from the same vintage, 1975. It came in with some faulty key contacts and a bit out of tune, so I figured I could tackle the job after doing a good bit of research on the particulars of this legend. I'm fortunate to have many knowledgeable friends in a classic email list, Analog Heaven, and didn't hesitate to ask for all of their advice. I ended up with quite a collection of insights shared by some extremely qualified people. So most of this job ended up being self-education. First thing I learned was that to fix the keyboard contacts, I only needed to remove the bottom wood panel and check out the mechanism from below. The bus bars were oxidized, and cleaning them with Q-tips and some isopropyl alcohol did the job. I was told not to use cotton q-tips, as the cotton tends to get caught on stuff. But this is what I had on hand and it worked fine. Just be very careful not to overstretch the springs when you're cleaning, or they might slip off their posts, and putting them back on is not so easy. And if they break, replacements are not cheap. Now all the key contacts are working properly, and all the pots and switches seem to be working well. So all that's left is calibration and tuning. I opened the back plate on the hinged chassis and propped the panel up on a plastic box. One thing I noticed right away was that most of the electrolytic caps looked very new, which indicates that this synth had already been recapped recently. Looks like somebody before me did some pretty intensive work on it already. So after doing some reading on the calibration procedure, I carefully removed the filter board to gain access to the power trimmers, turned the synth on and watched Stephen Colbert for about half an hour then came back. I found some good measuring points right at the filter caps for each power rail and trimmed the regulated voltages to plus and minus 10 volts, as precisely as my cheap meter would allow. I turned the synth off, placed the filter board back on, turned the synth back on and waited another 20 minutes to restabilize. Then I tuned the tuning reference oscillator to A440 with my chromatic tuner. Next I tuned and scaled VCO1 and then the two other VCOs and the filter. The full procedure is in my notes, to which you'll find the link in this video's description. Now, with this lovely Mini Moog cleaned and trimmed, all that's left is to compare its sounds to the first modular I ever built, a U-Synth Banana Modular in a format I call Kinkas U, which is basically 8 by 20 cm panels in two rows of 5, making a perfect 40 cm square. One of the filters on there is a Mini Moog clone, and I wasn't gonna miss the opportunity to compare it to the original. I also have the Arturia V Collection 5 software, which includes a Mini Moog VSTi, so why not use that in the comparison as well? I set up the same patch on the three synths, a basic bass patch with two VCOs, a triangle and a square, going into the filter with resonance more or less in the middle, and similar envelope settings across all three. Now close your eyes and listen, as I play each phrase three times, once on each synth, always in the same order, and see if you can identify which is which.
So if you guess that one is the Arturia, two is the U-Synth, and three is the Moog, congratulations. Personally, I think all three sound great, and romanticism aside, they all do the job in a production context. I think the Mini Moog is the clear winner, not surprisingly, and playing it feels like much more of an instrument. The sound is more focused and present too. The modular, of course, has much more flexibility for sound design and also sounds very strong. And the Arturia sounds very good, costs way less, is polyphonic and easy to integrate and automate in a DAW setting. They each have their strengths. But I'm not gonna lie, for me, so far, there's no Mini Moog like the Mini Moog. If Uli Behringer is listening, please feel free to send me your Eurorack Mini, sir, and I'll add it to this comparison. How do you think they compare? That's it for this week. Please like, subscribe, and pitch in on my Patreon so I can keep these videos coming. Now, enjoy a jam with all three Mini Moogs playing together. Thank you. 